Good evening. Our lecture today is about endometriosis. وبال عربية اسم بطانة الرحم المهاجرة. What is endometriosis? Endometriosis is an endometrial tissue that's lying outside the endometrial cavity. We know that the endometrial cavity is lined by the endometrium. Sometimes this endometrium goes elsewhere and this leads to the condition called uh, called endometriosis. It is usually found in the peritoneal cavity and predominantly it is found in the pelvis. The most common site is the uterosacral ligament, but it's also found in other locations such as the umbilicals, the abdominal scars, the nasal passages and the pleural cavity. There has been reports of patients complaining of hemoptysis and during uh, follow-up and investigation, they were found to have endometriosis, and this is usually an abnormal or unusual location for this condition. Since it is an endometrial tissue, it is an endometrium. So endometrium is hormonal dependent. It depends on estrogen, and it undergoes the cyclical changes that happens each cycle with estrogen and progesterone. So this endometrial tissue, although it is ectopic and it is not found in the endometrium, in the endometrial cavity, it will undergoes bleeding and subsequent inflammatory reaction. These cycles of bleeding and inflammatory reaction will lead to subsequent adhesions between the organs. These adhesions lead to pain and infertility. What about the incidence of endometriosis? Endometriosis, actually, it is the most common benign gynecological condition. In the reproductive age group, which is between 15 years old and 45 years of age, it is usually the incidence is 1 to 2 percent, and overall incidence in women is 10 to 15 percent. Let's have a look on this picture. This picture is a laparoscopic view of the pelvis. It's a camera or a probe that's inserted from the umbilicus that holds a small camera that we can view the pelvic organs. By this view, we can watch the uterus and both ovaries and fallopian tubes. See, the tissue is healthy here. There are no adhesions, there are no abnormal spots. So this is the normal organs in the pelvic cavity. Look at this photo. At this photo we can see that this is also a laparoscopic view of the pelvis with the pelvic organs, but here we can see the uterus, but the tissue looks unhealthy. There are multiple bleeding points, multiple scarring. Uh, these burn-like tissue is like cigarette burns. This is endometriosis and endometriotic tissue with filamentous adhesion bilaterally we can see like spider web this is the endometriosis it is endometrial tissue that lies outside the endometrial cavity and as we can see in this picture it bleeds what about the etiology of this condition it is unlikely that single theory can explain this condition so there has been multiple theories the four main theories are, first, menstrual regurgitation and implantation or Samson's theory. In this theory, it postulates that some endometrial tissue will pass through the fallopian tube and implant into the endometrial cavity. This has been found in animals, in laboratory animals, and also in patients complaining of outflow obstruction. The second theory is the coenomic epithelium transformation, or Mayer's coenomic metaplasia. In this theory, they say that the lining of the pelvic cavity and the monarian duct, which is the epithelial cells, will de-differentiate and return back to their embryonic origin, and then they will form endometrial tissue. This endometrial tissue will form the endometriosis. This condition is triggered by hormonal reaction or by inflammatory reaction. This condition has been found in patients with no uterus, some congenital anomalies in which there will be absence of the uterus, 
but the patient still found to be having endometriosis in the pelvic cavity. So the first theory cannot explain this condition, but this theory, the chromic epithelium transformation, will explain this theory. In the third theory, which is the genetic and immunological factors, it has been found that some women is more susceptible for forming endometriosis. And certain conditions can trigger this condition by immunological factors. It has been found that endometriosis is more prevalent in patients of first degree relatives. And it has been found it is more prevalent in patients of oriental origin, where it is less prevalent in patients of Afro-Caribbean origin. The last theory is the vascular and lymphatic spread, in which emboli of endometrial cells will pass through the lymphatic canals or the vascular canals, and this can explain the finding of endometriosis in an abnormal locations or in far, locations far away from the pelvic cavity, such as the pleural cavity, such as the nasal passages, the abdominal scars, and the implacus. The clinical presentation of this condition could be cyclical, non colicky pain or at or around the time of menstruation. Sometimes it is associated with heavy bleeding, heavy vaginal bleeding, but note it is sometimes, not always. Deep dyspareunia, infertility, cyclical epistaxis, and cyclical rectal pain, these are rare depending on the site of the endometriosis. As we say, it could be placed in some unusual places such as the pleural cavity, the nasal cavity, sometimes even in the bowel, causing these symptoms. Physical examination in endometriosis is mainly done by vaginal examination. Physical examination, general examination is not helpful. Uh, abdominal examination is slightly helpful, but to me, the main examination is vaginal examination. We will find the most findings. Uh, the first finding is fixed retrograde uterus with nodularity felt alongside the sacral ligament and tenderness in part of Douglas. Also, we can feel a denixial mass which represents endometrioma or chocolate cyst. We mentioned in physical examination that sometimes we can feel uh, endometrioma or a denixial mass that is called endometrioma in case of endometriosis. Endometrioma is when endometriotic tissue formed or found inside the ovary. This endometrial tissue will undergo the cyclical changes in each cycle by the influence of estrogen and progesterone and it will bleed. The collection of this blood will form a material that is brownish reddish in color. It is similar to chocolate in shape and in color so it is called chocolate cyst. In this picture we can see this is an ovary that has been removed by ophorectomy that has been cut in half the area that is marked by the black arrow showing this brownish reddish material similar to chocolate as we said so this cyst is called chocolate cyst so how can we diagnose this condition first based on the clinical symptoms and signs as we said and next we can do some investigations the first investigation which is simple non expensive and non invasive which is the ultrasound the ultrasound mainly help and helpful to detect endometriomas or chocolate cysts, which are cysts filled with brownish material composed of old blood due to the presence of endometriotic tissue inside the ovary, leading to frequent cyclical bleeding forming these cysts. So these can be diagnosed by ultrasound. Ultrasound also helpful in excluding other pathologies that causing dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea or the presence of any masses in the pelvis. The second investigation is the MRI. The MRI is helpful in detecting the lesions, especially if they are embedded deep in the pelvic cavity, and it is sensitive in detecting lesions more than five millimeter. The last one, which is the most important one, but it is more invasive, so we mentioned it lastly, it is the laparoscop uh, laparoscopy. Uh, the laparoscopy still is the gold standard for the diagnosis of endometriosis. It depends on the visualization, direct visualization by the surgeon for these lesions inside the pelvic cavity. These lesions could be either red or it could be black or it could be white fibrous lesions. 
the other advantage of laparoscopy is it is not only for diagnosis. At the same time, the surgeon can apply um, treatment at the same time by ablation, by releasing of adhesions, by removing of the endometriomas or the chocolate cysts. Now, what about the effect of endometriosis on fertility of the woman? Studies have been found that 30 to 40 percent of women who have difficulty in getting pregnant or some sort of infertility or subfertility, they have been found to have endometriosis. Endometriosis by itself affects the fertility by different mechanisms and different methods, not by a certain single method. The most widely known methods is by either uh, periadenixial adhesions, as we said, the endometriosis forming by frequent bleeding and healing. These cycles will lead to the formation of filamentous adhesions. This might lead to tubal blockage and adhesions. Second is by destruction of the ovaries by endometriosis. This will lead to decrease in the ovarian reservoir. This will affect the, uh, the hatching of the ova and will affect also the fertilization. The third method is by alteration in tubal motility, if there is any deposit in the tube. Uh, also by reducing coital frequency due to dyspareunia. And it's also found, has been found that endometriosis affects or causing early pregnancy failure due to prostaglandin release due to immunological causes. What about the management? First of all, we should know that endometriosis is a long-term condition. There is no definite cure, medical cure for endometriosis. So every medical treatment we should, uh, we will use is to alleviate the pain and to alleviate the symptoms. And we should know also that the treatment should be tailored for each individual woman according to her age, according to the severity of her condition, according to the symptoms uh, that she's complaining from, and according to the fertility wishes of the patient. And we should also know that progression of this disease is very little. The modality of treatment, basically they are divided into two groups, either medical treatment or surgical treatment. First of all, medical therapy. Medical therapy, the first part of medical therapy is to alleviate the pain, so we should use first the analgesia. Analgesia, the most commonly wide and widely used, are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They are helpful in controlling the symptoms such as the deep dyspareunia, such as the dysmenorrhea, but we should know that these drugs are only for controlling of the symptoms. They will not affect the disease by itself, and also they should be used in the absence of contraindication for the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The second part or the second medication is the combined oral contraceptive pills. These pills are help helpful in patients not wishes to conceive at this time. They help to control the symptom. Uh, they cause uh, inhibition of ovulation. Uh, they cause amenorrhea. So they will stop the cyclical bleeding of this endometrial tissue that is planted elsewhere in the body and they will alleviate the symptoms. Uh, they are usually used for six months uh, for diagnostic reasons. So if we give the patient combined or contraceptive pills for continuously, note it is used continuously, not cyclically, continuously. So the patient should use pack after pack of contraceptive. This will cause amenorrhea. This will help to alleviate the pain. So this considered diagnostic in, uh, we can diagnose the patient with endometriosis because the symptoms are relieved with the combined oral contraceptive pills. But these are not helpful if the patient is wishes to conceive. This is first. And second of all, if the patient is relieved by this medication, by the combined oral contraceptive pills, we can continue this medication for uh, several years until the patient wishes to conceive. Third option in medical treatment of endometriosis are progestogenes. These are th synthetic progesterones, including progesterone-only pills or hydroxyprogesterone acetate. These are widely used to suppress the ovulation and to decrease the symptoms. These are used in case of contraindication for the use of combined or contraceptive pills. The other option is levonorgestrel containing device commercially done as 
uh, Marina. Uh, this is used for long-term treatment, especially after surgery. The fourth option is Denazol and Gestrinol. These are, or this medication causes suppression, suppression of ovulation, but because of their wide range of side effects, which include greasy and oily skin, acne formation, uh, weight gain, alteration of lipid profile after the use of six months, and because of the permanent change in voice, they cause hoarseness of the voice, they are widely replaced nowadays by the more modern medication with less side effects. The fifth and final option in the medical treatment of endometriosis is gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists. These medications will cause hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, so they will suppress ovulation and suppress the release of estrogen. But this medication has side effects because of the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, they will cause a pseudomenopausal state. So the patient will have symptoms like menopause, such as hot flushes, night sweats. So they are not designed to be used more than six months. After the six months, this medication will cause osteoporosis. So these medications are reserved only for diagnostic purposes or to be used prior to surgery. So these were the option of medical treatment. The second option is the surgical treatment. There are two types of surgical treatment either conservative surgery or definitive surgery, or we call radical surgery. The conservative surgery, these includes or done by laparoscopy, and these include either uh, diathermy ablation, laser ablation, or resection of any lesions we found in the pelvis. This includes the resection of endometriomas. We should not do oophorectomy. We should do cystectomy by removing of the endometrioma or the chocolate cyst alone. If we cannot remove the chocolate cyst or the endometrioma by cystectomy, we should do drainage and then we should remove the lining of the cyst or destruction of the cyst, the lining of the cyst by diatherm. The second option is the definitive surgery. The definitive surgery, it's the radical surgery in patients who completed her family. Uh, and with severe symptoms that cannot be alleviated by medical treatment or by conservative surgery. It is beyond conservative surgery, more advanced condition. We should do a radical surgery. The radical surgery includes hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo-ophrectomy. The bilateral ophrectomy is important because we should remove the source of estrogen, which is or which are the ovaries in this condition. So after removal of the ovaries and after removal of the uterus, the patient will go into a state of menopause. So the patient could be young, like in her 30s, in her 40s still, and she goes into early menopause. We should relieve the symptoms of the menopause by giving her low dose of hormonal replacement therapy. This hormonal replacement therapy usually should be given after six months of the surgery because sometimes there is a small deposit of the disease that has been missed by the surgeon or deeply seated in the pelvis. So they should um, uh, all go to fibrosis and uh, be dead by the time we give hormonal replacement therapy. All these options we mentioned before were in patients who did not wish to conceive at this time. So what about a patient who have endometriosis and want to get pregnant? Uh, endometriosis usually is divided in four stages. These are minimum, mild, moderate, and severe. But the classification and the degree by which we classify this disease is beyond your level at this time. This is for postgraduate uh, students. So you should only know that a patient with mild or minimum or a very uh, small disease or a very early disease, we can do intrauterine insemination with or without surgery and ablation by laparoscopy, as we said before, the conservative surgery. But if the patient have more severe disease, more moderate disease, more adhesions in the pelvis, uh, more deep-seated lesions, the second option will be by in vitro fertilization, or this option can also be used in case of the presence of other factors that affect infertility, such as if the patient is 
um, uh, more than 35 years old, uh, uh, if there is any male factor infertility, if there are any other factors that can cause fertil infertility in this patient, so the in vitro fertilization will be our first choice. For further reading on the subject, you can go to uh, Gynecology by Teen Teacher, the 19th edition, and ESHRI Endometriosis Guidelines by September 2013. These are the references for this lecture. I hope I did well, and I hope you understood the subject, and thank you.